everyone for our April 1999 meeting of the local chapter of Society of Fire Protection Engineers and the Security Council. Um, as we do for most of our meetings, we're going to start by a, a brief introduction by everyone. I'm going to start by this table right here. Stand up and just give me a couple of Tom Antel and Dr. Lee Arthur. Dr. Lynch from the Army Fire Department. Teresa Kimler in Asia. Bob Miller with Cargo. Jared Robo with Jamie Harsh with Planet. Jared Ross with Protection and Health Care. Steve Fredrickson with ADP. Dave Lindstrom with Fire Guard Sprinkler. Joe Rennick with Fire Guard Sprinkler. Steve Bowles with Yoko. Doug Rubin with Freedom. Hi, I should follow this way. I'm going to try it. Press announcement and news associates. coming 
not that new topic. It's a presentation uh, put on by Roland Huggins with the AFSA Director of Technical Services. And um, it was about an hour and a half presentation, and it was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, when you registered, it came with a booklet that you could take notes on with some additional information. And then also, uh, at the end of the seminar, it opened up the question and answer to where you could uh, participate with, uh, in many other locations in the country. I'm planning on um, offering several more of these uh, uh, telephone seminars. And I guess for people with a real busy schedule who don't feel like either locally or um, going out of town for a seminar, I have just an order of pizza and some beverages and then people in the office on the uh, speaker phone and participate in the seminar. Real reasonable. I mean, this one was um, $80 for, for non-members and $70 for members. Uh, I think it was well worth it. There have some, uh, from what I've been told, some interesting seminars coming up. And it's basically, you sit there and close your eyes and you can visualize the speakers being there. And it's, uh, uh, pretty educational and informative, and I think it's uh, a good tool that the NFSA is using in some of these seminars. So, if anybody's interested in these seminars, also they can contact the NFSA or Ryan Pets on the information too. Again, anyone uh, who'd like to become a member of the Society of Fire Protection Engineers, uh, they can see me. I have uh, many brochures and information from the Society if they want to become a member. If anybody would like to become a member of the local aid in Minnesota Fire Protection Council, they can see I'm Dave Foley or myself. We have um, applications all the time. We always like to take in new members when we can. Get you on the mailing list. Get you on our um, hopefully resurrected newsletter that we had at one time. Um, other items. Third International Conference on Performance-Based Fire Codes and Fire Safety Design Methods. It's going to take place June 15th through 17th. And Things you notice this next year in 2000. And Lund University in Lund, Sweden, so it gives everybody a lot of time to save up for this one. Because the deadline for registration, though, is September 1st of this year. So if anybody's interested in uh, going to this conference, it's uh, co sponsored by the uh, International Council for Research and Innovation in Building Construction and the International Fire Safety Engineering Institute. I uh, have information on this, or else you can also. Uh, a regional seminar coming up on uh, May 3rd through 7th in Chicago, Illinois. It's a five-day sprinkler technician program for fire officials, and that's sponsored through an FSA. If anybody needs information on that seminar, I get information on that also, or else you can contact an FSA directly. Uh, a few more items coming up. The AFSA seminar series, May 10th through 14th, it's on NFPA 13, it's a deal on hydraulic calculations, another one on NFPA 25, and another one on plant review. Uh, that one's all in Columbia, South Carolina, so we're going to turn that one. You should register soon. Um, contact myself for um, AFSA is sponsoring this one. Uh, let's see. Many and FSA uh, seminars and conferences coming up. Um, inspection, testing, maintenance, sprinklers for residential occupancies, new technology, technician training, uh, hydraulics for fire protection are coming up at various sites. That meeting will be just two more months in months of May and June. And they continue for the rest of the year. Again, this is third NFSA sponsored and I have that information. There's many educational opportunities available uh, to our industry through uh, NFPA, uh, DFSA, and NFSA that uh, every now and then I'll uh, do these announcements for. NFPA, the Certified Fire Protection Specialist Board, um, they're working a partnership to offer the Certified Fire Protection Specialist Examination. And this is for non-engineering fire prevention or protection technologists who have acquired expertise and professionalism through applied work and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, The CFPS credentials are pursued by fire chiefs, marshals, inspectors, educators, safety managers, uh, as well as fire protection consultants and design professionals. Uh, for more information, I have uh, uh, names, contacts, phone numbers. I think what they're trying to do is uh, start up another um, 
certification program is similar to the NYSA certification program that uh, many of you are a part of, and this is just taking it one step further. Um, they're looking for passing scores on their certification examinations. It's based on 18th edition of the NFPA Fire Protection Handbook, so it's a little bit more expanded uh, in some areas as far as what NYSA goes into. So I've got the information on that. Another seminar, smoke management for atria and other large spaces seminars. This is through uh, SMPE. Um, this seminar is on June 7th of this year at the Raymond Hotel in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, if anybody is interested in attending this seminar, we want to get more information on the registration forms here. Contact myself or, or SMPE. They can also contact Ashray if they need any more information on it too. Another seminar for SFPE is the introduction to the computer fire model. Um, it's going to be next month, uh, May 13th and 14th at the Omni Inner Harbor Hotel Hall in Maryland. It's a two-day short course for fire protection engineers. Um, it's a little pricey, but uh, depending on um, your area of expertise, and, uh, it's how much you want to spend, how much it's worth to you, uh, your personal development, how much it's worth to your company, your company's development. This is another course that's offered through the SMPE. Real quick, don't forget about the um, second conference on fire safety and design in the 21st century at the WPI in Worcester, Massachusetts. And of course, uh, next month um, is the um, May 16th through 20th is the NFPA World Safety Congress in Baltimore, Maryland. So if you don't have your um, registration in that hotel rooms and your um, all the toilets for the set up all the top on that room. That's about as much as um, announcements I'm going to exhaust for right now. Uh, we'll get on with our program. Our program, we have company fire protection overview uh, will be conducted by Mr. Steve Bowles, uh, Steve is the 3M Fire Protection Specialist. Steve has over 25 years associated with fire protection, 20, over 20 years at 3M. Um, Steve is an ISA Level 4 certified designer, and Steve, um, Steve will be explaining how and why the certain types of um, fire prevention and fire suppression systems at 3M utilizes um, further industrial applications because they are Having worked with Steve before, they are a little bit different animal than most of us encounter in the uh, residential and commercial institutions. Like at this point, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Holtz. You might consider the group very similar to an A&E firm. 
we don't provide the services that our customers are requesting, they have the option to go elsewhere. It's not a requirement for the corporation to use our services to pay them to do that. We have to pay them just as hard as everyone else does. Fire protection, we're having a blast. Protection, the group within the facilities engineering provides a wide range of services, including design, consultation, estimating, overseeing of installation, and testing of systems. The group is essential to 3M's commitment because it ensures safety for its employees, the facilities, and at the same time assisting in training others in fire prevention concepts and practices. Part of our responsibility is to implement the fire safety codes and standards, which we all agree on, as an important measure regarding lives and property and fire damage. Not to slight the safety aspects of automatic sprinklers, the fire protection systems not only provide assistance in keeping the possibility of a loss to a minimum, but also assist in maintaining an excellent rating with our insurance carriers. This rating converts back to a cost savings to the corporation. It's one of the ways that we try to justify our job in some way. Our group strives to remain up to date on the latest in fire technology and provide the best service to 3L. Some of the duties that we're responsible for conduct plant fire protection studies, perform hazard analysis at all facilities, ensure compliance of codes through research and application, prepare some of the NFPA codes, fire codes, insurance requirements, local authorities. While we don't always meet everyone's requirements, we still have to entertain and improve requirements. We serve as a liaison for engineering issues with our insurance carrier. Since most of our insurance recommendations are based on engineering issues, we work very closely. There are several companies that are involved in providing insurance to 3M. Protection Mutual, Industrial Risk Insurers, or the most active of participants. Johnson & Higgins, Mark Clellingham work very closely with us providing broker service. We provide consultation for U.S. and O.U.S. projects. The recent change in the last two to three years, we went to a global program on our insurance. And as a result of that, we're more involved with the review and the design of facilities outside the United States. We're also responsible for the design and testing of all special hazard systems, CO2, all high pressure, low pressure. Our approach is to work with our customers to determine their needs. During the initial planning stages, especially on the very large projects, we try to sit down with our insurance carriers earlier to make sure that we've covered all our bases. When we're laying out the underground system, we look at the option of whether we need to include additional T's in the valve for future considerations for future run-in. In a lot of cases, that information is not known to us, but we have to plan ahead and think forward of it. This has paid off many times over for us. While we do not have an open checkbook for design, we do have the luxury of designing and planning for the future. When we look at some of our sites, especially the larger industrial sites, we have a looped underground main, a lot of cases dual fire pumps, water reservoir, in some cases a dual reservoir, fairly elaborate type of systems. And in an industrial site, of course, we run into all aspects of fixed fire protection. Wet, dry, deluge, free action, double interlock free action, freezer systems, flammable batteries. We have a multitude of various systems that we can afford. An important rule that we have to follow within the group is understanding the hazards that we're working with. When reviewing a project, all the information has to be known up front. This requires an interaction between the engineer and the customer. 
we have to know which questions to ask. Hopefully our customers will know what information to provide back to us. Many companies have been hit with catastrophic fires. Many have also learned to gain valuable insight and information from this. The sprinkler system that was installed five years ago in the warehouse on plastic commodities is now trying to protect the plastics. No changes to the sprinkler system are still expected to provide the same type of coverage. When the warehouse burns down, the question becomes, how does the sprinkler go? During the 1980s, we designed all of our warehouses for class 4 commodities, mainly from the standpoint we couldn't control the products coming in. And we felt that taking the worst case scenario was our best bet, and at the time it was. With the influx of plastic materials coming in, and more and more of our products were there, we realized that we had to change. Today we're going back and reviewing all of our warehouses to determine the proper protections are if it needs to be up In a lot of cases, we can change out a system fairly simple by replacing some heads. In some cases, we have to refit or retrofit the total system to also available water or pressure. And in some cases, fire pumps are having to be installed. This is a fairly large expense that the three owners have to undertake. But at the same time, we understood that we could not accept the risk by not doing it. Communication is our key to success. Without it, either the companies or us will benefit, and in some cases, we both will suffer a major loss. 3M, just like other companies, has seen a major reduction in its workforce. It's forced us to change a different outlook on how we take our tour. When I first started at 3M, there were approximately 13, including the contract and permanent employees working in the fire protection. Today we have two, basically, and have all of the projects in the U.S. It's a major change. In the early days, 3M provided all design drawings for sprinkler systems. We had it to do the design drawings. <laughs> Today, we write the design on material. We don't do any drawings. Again, we tend to change our velocity and our method of being work. While it's commonly known that 3M stands for meetings, that's very true, it is. But at the same time, all of these meetings bring the various disciplines together, structural, the engineering, the civil, the utilities, so that we can discuss the projects and look at them. If we're looking at installing an ESFR system in a warehouse, but structural is looking at using concrete key construction with smoke paint, we have a little problem. So having these meetings, even though we have a tremendous amount of them, it does enhance the projects. It eliminates a lot of problems showing up in the field later. 3M also works with our insurance carriers extremely close. We've developed some guidelines over the years that are for specific areas that we use, mainly truck and load stations, tank farms, lamp of liquid, storage, high policy. We've been raising a lot of questions now with some materials. Insulate, how long not woven. While we realize that the National Fire Protection Association provides the standards and guidelines for minimum requirements, there are occasions where we feel additional protection requirements. We have to look at our risk, or our values, not only from a property standpoint, but from a business interruption standpoint as well. While the value of the property may be low, business interruption could be high. So we have to evaluate them to determine market loss potential in other areas. Coating operations, for example. Buildings are protected fully sprinkled with an extra hazard class of coating operations. But in addition, it's on the CO2. reason for this is the quickness of extinguishing that type of fire, minimal downtime, and no cleanup. At the same
same time, there's other considerations that we have to look at when we're choosing or selecting the type of system. Life safety considerations, CO2 percent of life safety concerns, cleanup, the downtime. Light water is an excellent product for flammable liquid spills. Clean up inside a building as well. In some applications, we've chosen to go with the deluge type of localized home injected systems in place of using the CO2. A lot of times, what we'll have to do is work with the plant
The tunnel systems uh, have pretty well gone out. We had like a couple plants and we're able to go and uh, many touches pretty well done away with our tunnel system. And most of it is because of the code changes, having the level lifted to the base material. Yes, Lord. You, you had mentioned that your group uh, comes up with a design criteria that does not no longer design the systems themselves. We set up the density requirements and any special uh, items that we would like to have. Do you then check the, the uh, contractor shop drawings? Yes. So you so you still do that now. Right, the review is still taking place in house. We send out the basically just the basic spec. It covers requirements like a 3.0 for 1500 or 2000 for the liquid. It also provides the eight and a half by 11 details of most of our systems because they're all pretty much duplicate. We can pull them right out of the catalog for ourselves. And it's all based on our CAD code. Does Trium still do the inspections and acceptance tests? That recently changed uh, up until the end of last year. We did do a minimum service. We had to reevaluate it. But now it's gone back to the individual clients working with them. We either have a local contractor come in or the plant in some cases if they got a qualified person. And again, we coordinated with uh, our insurance carriers. Yes, sir. So what is uh, the family doing with the FEMA on the inner rooms? Not only in the U.S., but then like in international rooms. In the U.S., I think we pretty well pulled everything. I think there's only maybe two systems left. One is out at the FEMA Center in the electric storage area. Have you dealt with any water in the system? No, we haven't. We've looked at a, 
uh, maybe one or two applications, but it didn't work out. It didn't fit in with the half of the Yes? You hear that we can't real well. Um, I have a tank farm out there, and we just modified the system in a few different tanks, and the fire department out there wants me to test that flowing like water yes. on it. Any suggestions how to provide loving and actually dump the environmental cleanup problems we have, as well as the cost of the I I did dump both. I, I did the original design for this, so I had to dump both of them for the because we had a lot of discussions, but it didn't even come close. So we ended up dumping both tank farms into the entire area. I've got some old pictures, by the way, too. Any other comments? No trade secrets. How often is 3M dealing uh, basically developing performance based code for codes for fire protection at some of the facilities where you're, you're dealing with something just totally outside the realm of the codes because the particular products that you're handling and manufacturing from a performance based standpoint, not that much. We can in to some Lithium, the building out of the uh, center of the city of the Chicago Lithium that power to the batteries. The water reactive to the spring going against everything we do. So, on occasion, we're sort of coming up with a standard form of space design. We've dealt with some projects uh, <coughs> with other customers where they're dealing with very uh, corrosive vehicles and fumes to the effect they have towards uh, a lot more of the spray type fire proofing areas because of the corrosive alternative methods, turbine usage, sprays, the protection of the system. We've, as a matter of fact, White City, Oregon has a special spray system they know because they couldn't make the chemicals they were using as well as a lot of the steel and it had to be washed down. The fire proofing would not work, so we doubled up with the protection of the steel, the protection, and stripping the air. But I've only run across maybe two or three systems at the time. We may deviate a little bit, but I guess I've never looked at it from a performance base aspect or at because of other outside We're dealing more and more with the types of products that we have to do with the things, but we just have to turn more toward the sort of performance based design. What I've seen so far, I guess, within 3M, is pretty well, up and down that stuff, it's like it's pretty happy. You mentioned dual and lock reaction systems. Is 3M standardized electric for the first thing decided for example, automatic activation for zeros? We really haven't standardized on that. We've looked at a couple of others. We did a uh, full storage warehouse for activation and that was the dual analog reactions. Uh, we were open to looking at various things, but we're also, as most of you know, we have a very conservative. When products come out for probably five years, we have to look at it. The same thing with the protective wire for us, that was something we were going to do. We're going to get more and more to the office. I, I have to smile because <laughs> we're going through a rather large issue with that right now. <laughs> we're trying to determine what we're going to do. But what has happened is we have a warehouse in the Valley of Nebraska where that ESFR system was installed. And it appears that the heads may be too close to some of the choice structures. We're trying to get a precise look at We're going to have to cut back the lanes and offset some heads. We're trying to 
to look at different options there and also consider that calls to be involved. But yes, that is a problem. And that goes back to the field inspection of us having to get out and being out of the position of the job more than the intermediate portion of the job. I know it's a 3 m is very big on safety. Um, what are some of the, uh, I guess, codes that contractors have to work on 3M sites, have to go through in regards to the safety training, et cetera? The reason I'm bringing it up, I've been on some 3M sites before, and I know that one plant that basically had to take a three-hour uh, uh, computer safety course and had to pass it 100% for the
No, I guess from my standpoint, I would see it that, yes, for working there on a regular basis. Any other questions? So if you're working with all the, the drugs now, I know a lot of it's been switched over to CAD, you've got to do it at least. Do you have any work with drugs from worldwide that uh, do a lot of emailing all over the country? We've got like one central branch all over the Through the U.S., yes. From the international development, that has been set up in that fashion. Usually what I get is a set of plans.
want to rehash any programs that we've had in the last couple of years that I really want to keep it fresh and keep it interesting. I want to keep people coming to the meetings, but also to increase the membership too. So please, you know, before you leave, at least fill out one idea. That just may come to your head right now. And um, I'm leave it with myself or David before you leave. <laughs> we'll ask that much out of you. Uh, next month, May, our May 27th meeting, which will be here at Toledo, which will be a Thursday night instead of a Wednesday night because our um, guest speaker is not able to make it on Wednesday night. However, he did say he wasn't going to keep us all night, so they might have a last night packing before the morning. They were going to get out of town and then we will take care of that. And, uh, so we will get hammered by our spouses at all. Anyway, our program for next month will be um, Viking Corporation, and they manufacture valves, sprinkler heads, and uh, other product lines, which they'll explain next month, which um, uh, I understand they have uses quite a bit of Viking uh, Corporation products, so they must be good, right? Um, that's going to be next month, again, Thursday, May 27th. Our uh, presenter uh, will be Alan Larson from Viking Corporation. Good for this month, I guess we'll see everybody next month on Thursday. So anybody else say you want to tell them? Thank you.